Welcome back to our home build. Now that we've passed our electrical inspection, I am uh, most of the way through installing the plumbing and the ductwork. And we're insulated with the stuff that I'm showing you here, along with some extra air sealing components. Uh, I want to give you a tour of what's happening right now and how this stuff works and why we're using it. So big picture, remember, we insulated on the outside of the house with continuous exterior insulation. That's two inches of this rock wool uh, brand. It was a different kind, remember. This is BATS. This is called Comfort Bat. On the outside of the house, we have Comfort Board 80. That's the density of it. And that's R4 per inch. We got two inches out there. That's R8, continuous. In here, we've got in the walls R15. That's three and a half inches. Uh, that's less dense. It's bat form, so it's it's you know like a bat of insulation that you would work with. But it happens to be a lot more dense than something like fiberglass. That if you've ever worked with, not as much fun. I've also worked with um, recycled blue jeans. Not fun at all. That is the opposite of working with this. And you can see a video about that on our channel as well. Under the slab, we even remember used rock wool. We used the Comfort Board 110 which is the same R value, but we used three inches thick underneath the slab to do that. And on the outside of the foundation walls, another three inches, but that's again the 80. So a whole bunch of different kind of varieties of things. And if you want to know about why we chose the different products, go back in time to our webinars on how we designed this enclosure because we wanted to get as continuous a jacket of insulation as possible, not just for thermal uh, control, which is controlling the heat bleed, but also for noise, because we are near the busiest airport in the world, in Atlanta. And so we want to make sure that everything is insulated as much as possible. Of course, we also want to do inside the cavities, because I only put two inches on the outside. That is not enough. If you were to just do the outside insulation, that would be more like six inches solid, is what I would have put on there. And that would have made all the trimming stuff, the screw lengths that I would have had to drive through everything would have been gigantic. Not really interested in that. So we use the cavities as well, which is what your house that you're sitting in that was built 10 or 20 years ago or 50 or 100 years ago might be insulated with. It's just cavity insulation. Um, so we're doing that because, of course, you always want to control the heat bleed. We want to control for uh, the noise again inside the cavity. And we're doing more air sealing. And people might say, after the conclusion of this video, wait a minute, why again, if you were already more than passive house airtight before you started doing all this stuff, why would you keep insulating and air sealing after it? The air sealing portion that we're doing on the inside, which is basically house wrap for the inside of the house, is important because just like on an engine, if you go to a good mechanic, and when I say good, I mean somebody who's like, just barely good, not even an excellent mechanic. They don't take their wrench and tighten everything one time. That would be very dangerous. You tighten everything once, then you go around again. Why am I paying you to go around my engine and tighten everything again? Because it's really, really important that the machine works safely and works consistently and predictably so that we can prevent disasters. This house and your house that you're sitting in and your grandmother's house, et cetera, et cetera, are all machines. They are not just little artworks that your daughter makes and you just put one piece of double-sided tape up and put it on the wall. And it's not even a painting of a really nice car that is a machine that's just going to sit there. The painting itself is not a machine. So even if you put nice glass on it and you mount it in a nice frame and all this stuff and you hang it with you know the right amount of hooks, and the right gauge of wire, that's really not the same as a house. A house is a living, breathing, working machine. You have to make sure that it's going to work properly because my family is going to live here. They're going to breathe this air. I want to make sure that it's full of nice stuff and that it's controlled and all that stuff. So these uh, products here that I'm going to show you installing, uh, number one, we've got R23 bats of Rockwell. We've got R15 bats. 23 plus 15 is 38. R38, a combination of one of these and one of those, is what we put in the roof in this entire house. That's nine inches solid of insulation. Normally, to get an R38, you'd have to go more like 10 or 12 inches. Uh, if you were using a different kind of insulation, cellulose, fiberglass, things like that. I like rock wool. I've used it on uh, the tiny house that we built. I've used it on my dry vault. I really enjoy working with this, and you'll see why in a few minutes. Um, but this bag and that bag weigh about the same. This one's thicker. 
uh, as a bat. It's five and a half inches thick. That one's three and a half inches thick. They put only eight of these bats in this bag and 12 in that one. So they weigh about the same. So when you're going around and, and schlepping these, uh, you will build some muscles, which is good for everyone. I, I encourage that. We only use these in the ceiling because the three and a half is what's going in all of the walls, even when we've got two by six walls. And I'll show you why again. Now, this is Intello. You've seen me use this before on the Tiny Lab and on the Dry Vault. It is a, a house wrap, basically, like you might be familiar with Tyvek um, or the stuff that you see that's plasticky at the uh, home improvement store. This is not like that. Number one, this is a better product that is airtight. And that's really important. Some of that plastic stuff that's woven with like threads of plastic, not airtight at all. And that's the whole point of this is not just for bulk water. The other thing about this, as you can guess from the name Intello, is that it is intelligent. It will react to the amount of moisture that's pushing on it in the form of water vapor, humidity. And it's got a variability of allowing that moisture through of a hundred times difference. So if there's a lot of humidity pushing on it, it'll say, oh, okay, all right, I got it, let, let you through. If there's just a little bit of humidity, it'll tighten back up and just make sure that it's very controlled. And in general, I've said this before, I hope that you remember this and repeat it to your friends, you do not want anything plastic in your house because if you stop water vapor from doing what it wants to do, it's gonna find a way to ruin your life instead. So don't fight against humidity. Try and control it, but be nice about it. Let it go where it wants to go because if it, if it is trying to get out of your house or into your house, it's gonna find a way to do that. This stuff is sealed at the seams with Vanna tape, Tescon Vanna. This is the, basically the same uh, kind of product as this is. It just happens to be in an adhesive form. It needs to be pressure adhered. So you don't just slap this on and then that's it. You use like a special little squeegee and I will show you all of this as we take the tour. So let's go ahead and walk around and see how all of this works. First off, understand that it doesn't make sense to insulate to different levels in different parts of your house because heat follows the path of least resistance. That's always what happens with electricity, with water, with heat, with air. So when we have the walls in this house, it, I have some two by six walls and the reason for that is because they're so tall. They needed to be structurally sound and that, that takes putting them up into a two by six, uh, which is a five and a half inch deep piece of wood. But I use the same insulation in the walls here because using six inches of insulation here and using four inches of insulation in two by four walls, wouldn't make sense. The, the heat would just go into the rooms and out through the two by four insulation instead. So it just makes it unbalanced. It doesn't seem to help your house as much as you would think. So if you're adding an addition and the rest of your house is not insulated at all, putting a ton of insulation into that addition is, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So just make sure that you're thinking about the home as a system. The insulation everywhere should be at a consistent level. Energy modeling is how you stop guessing about what is going on in the performance of your house that you're about to build or the improvements you're about to make. And you start knowing, predicting, and preventing the stuff that you don't want to have happen. One of the things we're preventing when we do this is spending money on stuff that does not matter. So just because more insulation is better is what you have heard on television or from the government or from whoever doesn't make it true. Science shows you this. So the only two by four walls in our house are this front wall and the entry door wall and then also on the back, this wall and this wall. It's the middle section of the house. These walls on the side are two by six because the structural engineer specified that because they're, the, some of the studs are 16 feet long. We have two by six walls there and there. And that's like majority of the house is two by six walls. But watch what happens over here on the energy model. So right now I have the two by four walls and the two by six walls, both filled with R15 cavity insulation. You can see that the gross area of the two by four walls is less than the two by six. What I've got going on is 21.5 uh, kilobtus per hour. That's my design load on the heating side and 16.9 on the cooling side for the whole house. My annual energy costs $1,400. That's a little more than $100 a month if you were to average it out. Now watch what happens if I change these two by six walls to R23 in the cavities plus the eight inch of continuous insulation. And I hit the lightning bolts. Check this out. I saved myself one kilobtu per hour on the heating and cooling, which means I still have to install the same exact piece of equipment for the heating and for the cooling. So that hasn't changed anything. And the amount of money I saved annually is $23 a year 
for 50% uh, more insulation in the cavities, which is more expensive, let's be clear about that. So this is how you start to analyze where you're spending your money and making sure that you're not putting money where it's just not gonna work. It's a drop in the bucket when you compare it to everything else because heat follows the path of least resistance. And that being said, you wanna make sure that the insulation inside the cavity is at a consistent level. There should be no gaps anywhere, zero. There should be no compression. So if I put this insulation in here and I tuck it in like this, that hurts the insulation because the main ingredient in insulation, you know this, is air bubbles. That is what you are paying for, whether you're buying uh, rock wool, whether you're buying fiberglass, cellulose, sheep's wool from Ireland, spray foam, it doesn't matter. The air bubbles are the most important ingredient. This is how we like to do this, is to make sure that it's all nice and fluffy and that the air bubbles are given their, their space. Now through this wall, we have other things running, which I've also addressed in other videos. You can see right here, a plumbing line. This is for uh, Grace's pot filler. This is gonna be the, the stove and, and cooktop right here. And so I wanna make sure that this is all inboard of the insulation. So on the back side of this, I have R23 of insulation. I've got 15 here in the cavity, plus eight on the outside of the house. There is no way that this pipe is ever gonna freeze. And that is a concern for some people. They say, oh, well, how do I make sure? Well, you wrap it in wire that's gonna warm up in the wintertime, crazy talk. What you wanna do is make sure that you have the insulation that can just work without costing you any electricity at all. It just works all the time behind what it is that you're trying to protect. Also, we've got all kinds of electrical running through the walls. We've got uh, outlets and switches and things like that. And this two inches of space up here helps me to put all that in and still get the continuous R15 across the cavity. So between the stud and the stud, there is R15 everywhere. Now, here's one little tip for you. If you do have to compress like behind this box, we do have it pushed in, you can see here, what you end up doing is not going down to R0, like, oh, there's no insulation behind this at all. What you have done is essentially the same thing as if you cut out for where this is gonna be and you put the nice fluffy insulation right behind it. So if there's only two inches behind it and you take a four inches of insulation and squish it down to two inches, you end up with the same R value as that two inches. So really at that point, it's just a game of how anal do you wanna be? Do you wanna cut it away or do you wanna squish it down and get basically the same R value either way? Now, this is all done from the base plate all the way up to the ceiling. And before we move on to Intello, I have somebody who did not install this, quality assure it by just looking at every single square inch of it and making sure that we didn't miss anything. Then we move forward into uh, the Intelloing. But before that, we wanna make sure that these little guys are air sealed behind them. Let me show you what I mean by that. In the electrical install video, you saw that I had the guys use these, which are called Insta boxes, And uh, I wasn't super excited about how they turned out. Uh, I obviously am not an expert at uh, having them use these. I had some for the tiny lab, which is why we had them on site. But uh, we ended up not putting any electrical in any exterior wall in a tiny lab, which was the way to go for that project in a real house very difficult to do. Code is one of the things that's gonna get in your way because you need to have an electrical outlet box every six feet along exterior walls. I also have the outside of this plastic box to tape to because it sticks out a half inch from the uh, stud. So if we were to just come along here and tape from the Intello onto this box, that works perfectly well too. And so if that's what you're gonna do, which is what we decided to do, then you're gonna need some extra tape to seal up the back side of this. As you can see right here, there are holes, four holes on a single gang box. One, two, three, four. You're gonna need to seal all these up. The screw hole is gonna be filled by a screw later, so that is not as big a deal. But for this, I'm using Exto Seal uh, tape. It's another kind of tape. This is the Butylback tape that we used for some of the exterior air sealing components. Uh, butyl tape is not vapor permeable not really important when you're using it in a spot application. And I'm not using Vanna for this, which is a less expensive tape, because this is really flexible, so I can make it squish around the uh, wires. Let me show you how I just put this on very simply. Okay, so you peel the backing off of the tape. You can see right here the wire is coming out. What I'm gonna wanna do is make sure that I seal around the hole on the back side. 
and I'm kind of shoving the tape around the wire so that I can meet the tape up on the other side and form a little taco with my wire. And then I've also sealed up the other side here. And then you also want to make sure to get the bottom too. Now on a, this is not actually one that needs to be air sealed at all because of course it's opening onto interior space. Uh, but it's a much easier way for me to show you this. What I would be doing on a real exterior wall is reaching around and sealing on the back side of all of this. You want to make sure to take insulation out before you do this because you don't want to be working around insulation. The tape will get all gummed up uh, by the insulation fibers. So you take the insulation out, seal the back side if you've already insulated and put the insulation back. So you really need to be able to visualize what it is that you're doing back there. And this is it. You don't need to seal anything else on this because the plastic itself is a pretty good air tightness barrier. There's a couple other really important prep steps that you need to do before you start just putting up Intello because what you're about to do is hide everything in the exterior walls. First thing that you're going to want to know where they are is the studs. So you can see these white lines coming out from the wall at regular intervals. That is a map of where the studs are in this wall. Hard to do for the ceiling if they're offset from the wall studs, but you, you, know, you obviously can't mark everything. So we know that the flooring isn't going to go in until the last thing. So I will have the record of where this is through Intello and then through drywall. So the drywallers aren't going to have a hard time with this Intello getting in their way either because they'll know where everything is. Aside from the studs, you also want to know where all of the re receptacles and the switch boxes are and things like HVAC registers, because if those get covered up and then you never find them again, that's a problem. Uh, so I've marked on each of the walls just in front of where these are, wall receptacle low, WRL, or wall receptacle high, et cetera, et cetera. I also have marked out on the floor where exactly all of the lights in the ceiling are. Because of course you look up and you'll notice that there's no light up there. And it's because I have forgotten to cut the hole for this light. So the next step, of course, is, oh, I remember there is a light there and you would want to do this right after you Intello and then right after they're done drywalling to make sure that everything that is supposed to be sticking out into the occupied space is actually there. This really happens. I have been personally involved in testing homes and multifamily buildings where the drywaller just forgot to cut out for a register and then nobody caught it. And so there's all this cold air coming right out uh, behind the ceiling and it's not coming into the space where it needs to be. So it does happen. Just know that this is not dumb and extraneous. It's like very important to make sure that everybody's on the same page. Last thing is making sure that you're protecting all of the services that are running through your walls because Intello-wise, all we're doing is stapling and taping. Not a big deal. But after I Intello a wall that might have electrical or water running through it, the drywall team is not going to notice that there's something important behind there. So you need to put metal plates. This big guy is for where you've got uh, drain lines, anything that's containing water that's coming up through a bottom plate. Because of course the drywallers are going to be running screws into everything to attach the drywall. So you want to make sure that they are prohibited from doing that. If they're in the middle of the stud in a two by four, the drywall screws are not going to hit this because drywall screws are shorter than what, would, what it would take to get all the way through into the middle of this. So uh, generally, you're safe if you just drill right through the center of each of your studs. But in this case, I just wanted to be extra, extra sure that my daughters or guests down the road when they were hanging a picture for some reason for an elf uh, a foot from the ground did not go into this with some, whatever it is that they're using. And I've been a homeowner before, and I know that the size of screw that a homeowner will use to hang a picture is whatever they find in the drawer. It is not based on, oh, I know there's electricity running through this wall and I don't want to do that. I'm amazed that I've never been electrocuted before because I've done that plenty of times. Just want to make sure to be liberal with this because this is the last chance you will have to protect your services. Now this house is in a monitor barn shape, which means that it's got a second story that sticks up a little bit taller than the big first story wing. So this is a big first big story wing that I'm sticking my hand out through here. This ceiling is insulated because this is the enclosure. So the roof here is insulated again to R38. That's one R23 bat and one R15 bat on, stacked on top of each other. And they come up and hit right here on this wall. Therefore, I'm insulating the top part of this wall. And I also want to air seal it 
But of course, if I was to just slap this Intello on here, then I don't have a complete air seal. What I want to do always is create this uninterrupted line that is the air seal. So this space right here where my hand is right now inside the cavity is my weak point, which is why I'm going to come along and air seal this Intello down through the wall and uh, to the ledger that is what this roof connects to. So I will have an uninterrupted line of air tightness because of course I've got a 14 inch eye joist roof out here full of what I already told you is nine inches of insulation. That means there's a five inch gap on top of my insulation. Before you start freaking out if you're a building science nerd about condensation, remember that this is my air barrier. It's not the uh, exterior sheathing. Now I have two air barriers, both of which are vapor permeable. So this is actually a good way to do it. And rock wool actually advised me to do it this way where the insulation is touching the, touching the drywall instead of the exterior sheathing, because this is more what I'm wanting to control. So we're going to let the gravity do its thing. They're going to try to sag over time anyway. So they're going to sit right against the drywall, which is good also because I've got that radiant barrier that's on the backside of my roof sheathing. And that will work only when there is an air gap on the backside there. So I'm not filling this entire cavity because I learned from the energy model that five inches of air gap is fine. Filling it with more insulation actually wouldn't do me much good. So this air tightness detail is really an important one. And I'm going to make sure just to do this on this wall. The other wall here behind me, this wall is the same way as that. But of course, on the other side of this is my studio, which we do not want to have communicating with the living space. So I went ahead and air tightened all the way up and down this wall. So I don't have to do this detail on this wall, only on the one that I'm not air sealing completely away from the living space. You can see we're putting it up on the ceiling, of course, always important. Um, and for that, we're going to need to have marked out, like I already showed you, where exactly each of the lights is because it's hard to see through them and you just feel around for them. We're cutting out and then taping around each of those. They're each sealed on the backside, just like I showed you on the exterior wall outlet. And it's drooping a little bit right now because I haven't come along and taped it. The way that you attach it at first is just stapling it up along the edges. And then when you come along and tape, the tape covers the staples. And so those little holes don't matter anymore. You might think that putting interior house wrap on the ceiling of a 16 foot high room is a two person job. Not so. I will show you. All you need is your staple hammer uh, and the Intello and a great big ladder. I will say that following other people who use these materials a lot, these are from 475 High Performance Building Supply. You can find them on Instagram, see lots of beautiful pictures. I can tell from looking at my installation that this clearly is a one person install. And I'm looking at all these beautiful pictures of other builders and it's clear that they've got like a person and an assistant doing that. So um, yes, it can be done a lot more tight and beautiful and perfect. But remember, if it works, it works. You will never see this once the drywall is up. So if you want to pose it for a nice photo op, then that's useful. Uh, but this will work just as well as if it's really perfect looking. Now remember from the duct video, we had to soffit in. Soffit is just a little built-in wall that's going to contain and hide something. We had to soffit to this for this duct to come up through because we didn't want this sticking out into the space. It's insulated and it's not going to be, I know people like industrial look, but this is not the same thing. So we softened this in and before we softened, we intelloed this corner. Really hardcore builders who are good at using Intello, um, which I am not one of because remember this is the first big house that I've built, will Intello the entire exterior wall before they build any interior walls at all. You could do the same thing with drywall if you wanted to, but this stuff is, has got much different properties than drywall, remember. Um, I do not know how to do that. Uh, the way that they do that is by having a service channel where they, they run actually two studs. So they don't run any services through this exterior wall. They would then Intello everything and then put more two by fours on the inside of this running counter to the uh, studs. They would run horizontally. And then you run all your plumbing and your electrical inside of that. I don't have the brain for scheduling and budgeting and figuring all that out on this first house. So 
uh, and hopefully I won't be building another one. So anyway, you can see that in more hardcore builders and you can see all of them through the 475 YouTube channel, which I hope that you go check out because there's much more sophisticated ways to use this stuff. Here's that wall separating the studio where you're standing from the rest of the house. And you can see that we've got a double wall here with staggered studs. So this is two two by four walls back to back. We're gonna fill both of them with R15 bats. And then we've put the studs so that they hit in the middle of each other's cavities. And that's also purposeful. And that's to make sure that the sound can't go just through this and into another piece of wood that's the same density if they were perchance to warp over time and touch. Uh, I don't really trust anything in a building to stay exactly the way it is forever. And we want this to be a hundred year house. So we put these offset from each other and we're gonna fill this with uh, double insulation to make sure that people on the other side, not just don't get the thermal benefit of having a 72 degree room over here and a 72 degree room over here. It's not doing anything thermally. There is no heat bleed between these two spaces. This is all for sound and mostly for the mid range and high range sound. The low range sound is stopped by making sure that it has to change density as it goes through this wall. Now, you may have heard of Safe and Sound, which is another product that Rockwell makes. And the difference between Safe and Sound and what we're using is that Safe and Sound has a built in half inch air gap. What that means is that it's a half inch thinner than the stuff that we're using. I have built the half inch air gap into the wall spacing itself. So I am not using the safe and sound, I'm using the full thickness uh, comfort bat instead. So two of the pleasures of working with rock wool specifically are, number one, it cuts like tuna, basically. Uh, if you've ever seen a sushi chef cut this stuff. And also it installs for a friction fit. You've seen that there's really no strapping holding any of this in place. So what you've got here is a grid work that they imprint into this so that I can make a cut up here and then follow it straight down. And it marks pretty easily. Then I basically just cut it like this and it comes apart very simply. So I can make very precise cuts and have the shapes be exactly the way that I want them when they go in. Now this is dense enough that you can see I can't, I could break it. It'll break a lot easier than it'll compress. So if I stuff it into a cavity and this stuff is sized specifically for 16 inch on center, which is how we built our house. You can also get 24 inch on center. I think you can even get 19 point whatever people use. Again, it just fits in and you don't have to use any wiring to keep it in place, even in the ceiling, even with an R15 and an R23 bat backed up against each other, it'll still stay put. Uh, against the ceiling, which is kind of a miracle to me because I've put stuff in where I had to actually wire it into the walls. It wouldn't even stay put inside the walls. So this is really easy to work with and that's why I like to keep working with it. And since we love doing extra stuff, going the extra mile, getting the extra credit, we're gonna use the leftover rock wool pieces to stuff the acrylic bathtubs that we've got. We have two of them. One is freestanding, one is already installed here. And they're just filled with air. They're just basically a mold that comes out. It's acrylic. A much heavier duty tub, like a cast iron tub or something that's made out of stone or concrete. Well, obviously, since it has thermal mass, it's going to absorb that and hang on to the heat longer. But something like this, whether it's acrylic or fiberglass or uh, whatever it is, is not going to hang on to that heat. So you want to do something about that. Uh, unless you want your daughters to get out of the tub sooner, in which case we wouldn't do this, but I'm just trying to make sure that all the women in my life are happy. A lot of people keep suggesting, including my own family members, that we insulate inside the house between rooms or between floors. I do not think that's a good idea. Um, and I'll tell you why. Insulation does stop noise transmission, not necessarily thumping and thudding like people walking, which is the main thing that people are trying to get rid of between floors. So that doesn't make sense to me. Um, what would help that is like noise canceling drywall clips, which we are not using in this house. And aside from that, insulation's main job, the main side effect that you will get is slowing down heat bleed. So if I want my rooms to potentially be different temperatures, then I would absolutely insulate between each of them. Uh, I do not want that. I want every room inside this house to be exactly the same temperature. And so when I insulate, I'm stopping that from being a certainty. 
they're not going to be communicating as well with each other if there is insulation in the way. So we are not insulating any of the interior walls in this house, aside from the one between the studio and the rest of the living space, which is obviously for sound because there will be noise in there because I rock so hard. The next step after this is finally drywall, and this house will start to look massively different. So I'm excited to show you that. Please make sure that you're subscribed so that you can follow along with this build if you're not already. Like and comment as well. Tune in next time. Oh, 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 o